Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Our High Calling. I am your host, Brett Denman, and I pray that this last week has been a blessed one for you. It's been very busy for my family as we are preparing our move across the country. Uh, only by the grace of God is this going to happen. And we just ask for your prayers and uh, safe traveling mercies. You know, what I'd like to talk about today is about growth. You know, where my wife and I are constantly. Uh, teaching our children, uh, leading them to people that can teach them, you know, that are, are much wiser than I. But there, there has to be growth. And, you know, that's, that's what God wants for us, I believe. I believe he wants us to grow. He wants us to, um, to take this faith and, and, and learn of him and, and to grow and, and to get more knowledge and wisdom. You know, I'll have, I have a quote here from A.W. Tozer, uh, which uh, was an evangelist from last century. He says, The stiff and wooden quality about our religious lives is a result of our lack of holy desire. Complacency is a deadly foe of all spiritual growth. Acute desire must be present, or there will be no manifestation of Christ. To his people. So what he's saying here is that for us to grow, we have to have this desire. We have to have this, uh, you know, this fire uh, burning in us. Being being lukewarm Christians is not not good. We have to have the fire. We have to, you know, have this uh, burning desire in us to grow and to learn. And, and to just, because, you know, the Bible, it is like uh, an onion. You just keep peeling back layer after layer after layer. And, and it's, and each layer you go down, there's more depth to the, to the wisdom and knowledge that God has for us. And we'll never truly understand it. And, and only when we um, go to heaven and God uh, gives us a glorified body where we're not using 10% of our brain power, we're using 100%, and we'll be able to understand the mystery of godliness. You know, in 2 Peter 3.18, it says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. That's right. We're, we're going to be learning about Jesus forever. But you know what? We need to learn about him now. We need, we need to grow and, and we need to come to a better understanding. Because as we do that, then we're going to put, put away the cares of the world and we're going to focus on spiritual things. And I tell my kids all the time, what eternal value does that have, what you're doing? And I have to look at myself in the mirror as well. Is, is what I spend my time looking at or, or indulged in, is, does it have eternal value or is it just worldly entertainment? You know, God wants to empower us through the Holy Spirit to live a, a Christ-centered life. And as we, you know, continue to walk in the Spirit, which God calls us to do, right? We don't, we, we, we walk in the Spirit, not um, uh, walk in, in the lusts of the world. You know, I had a, uh, a Bible study I was doing with my kids, and we were talking about just that. I'm going to pull it up. We were talking about you know, the fruits of the Spirit. And of course, you find this in Galatians 5.19. I'm going to start reading. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. And it's now it goes on to list works of the flesh. So this is talking about all the things that people who, who walk after the flesh and not after the Spirit are indulging in. And it's a laundry list of things that no Christian should ever want to participate in. And it's a laundry list of things that really people uh, in general shouldn't want to participate in, but they do. And and I'll 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 read the list here. I mean, you've heard it before. I'm reading the King James version, so it has some words maybe that we don't understand. But if you read like the NIV, it it spells it out a little easier. But it says here, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these: adultery fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, 
of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past. So this is, he's, he's repeating himself here. He's like, I, I, I told you once before and I'm telling you again, right? Isn't that, you know, if you're a parent, where have you heard that before? You know, you, we, we tell our kids, if we told them once, we told them a hundred times. And, you know, as, especially as Christians, we don't want to be taught like that. We don't want God to say, if I've told you once, I've told you a hundred. We want to be better than that. We want to be, you know, hearers of the words and doers of the word. But here uh, in this letter to the Galatians, he says, uh, I tell you before, as I've told you in the past, that, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Bottom line, if you're taking part in, you know, adultery, it, 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 right? If you're if you're with someone who's not your husband or your wife, or if you're pretending to be married, but not really married, but doing things that married couples do, uh, that's fornication. And that's also a sin. All of these things that we listed off here are, are sinful behavior, which have no place in the kingdom of God. And that's that's what he's he's telling the Galatians here that you you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And it continues. But the fruit of the spirit. So here we go. So you have the one the fruit of lust is all those things. So if you indulge in in a lustful appetite, then you're going to indulge in the uncleanliness, the lasciviousness, the adultery, the witchcraft. You will do that. But if you're walking in the spirit, then uh, the fruit of that spirit, right? The results of that, of you walking in that spirit are going to be totally different. And it goes on to say here what, what those differences are. And it begins with love, love, joy, peace. Long suffering, right? Patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. If we if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So when we decide that we want to live for Christ, that we want to walk in the spirit, that the things that we indulge in are going to have eternal value and not temporary value then we are going to crucify the flesh. So, it's, because if you, if you notice all those activities, it's just to please the flesh, right? It's just to please the flesh, and it's always temporary. And a lot of it leads to heartache. A lot of it leads um, to a disruption in your life, which is not good. But you're doing it for a temporary pleasure. And usually it, you're hurting somebody. Maybe not you, but if you're committing adultery, then the spouse that's getting cheated on, they're, they're going to be hurt. And maybe there's children involved. There's most definitely parents involved, friends. So it's very selfish to walk. Uh, to walk after the, the lusts of the flesh is very selfish. But to, to, have, to walk in the spirit is the opposite of that because that's how Jesus walked. He did not walk after the, the lust of the flesh. He walked after the spirit of God, his father. And he had these characteristics. So he wants us to grow. He wants us to, um, and what, what does it mean to grow in Christ? You know, it means to increase in your knowledge of Christ and become more constant in, in your uh, love for him and your obedience to him. And there's, there's, a, there's a Bible verse, John 17, verse 3. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That, that is, should be our desire in life, is to know, to know Jesus better. And Jesus told his disciples, if you've known me, you've known the Father. So we, we can understand the character of God by looking at the character of Jesus. So the question is out there, you know, how can I grow in Christ? What can I do? Well, let's let's go through a few things that you can do, decisions that you can make daily that will help you to grow. And remember, it's only you who can make these decisions. If you truly in your heart desire that that you want to go deeper in your faith and you want to get have a better relationship with Jesus Christ, 
then then you will make these choices to do these things. But if you're pretty content and happy at where you are, like life is pretty good and you think you know enough about God, um, then you probably aren't going to make decisions uh, about what I'm talking about, that you're not going to continue to grow, that you're content. But, you know, unfortunately, uh, there's consequences. You know, becoming like Christ is a long, slow process of growth. It, you know, you may get spurts of growth where you learn a lot of stuff. And I remember that happened to me when I was in Korea, when I was, you know, taking Bible studies for baptism. And all these truths were just pop, pop, popping off the page. And I was, I, I had no idea that these were even in the Bible, even though I had read the Bible before. But as I talk about in my testimony book, Soul About Noon, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't read the Bible with the intention of, of learning anything. It was just like a novel, like a coffee table book you pick up. But that's not how you read the Holy Bible. You, you pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you to truth and understanding. And as you do that, as you commit yourself to, to understanding God's Word, then truths start to pop out. And it takes time. But, you know, for me, for a while there, all this truth was just, coming fast and furious and I was really excited and I was and I was really getting into it and and you know God was showing me that he was real and he was showing me uh, that he has a plan and a purpose for my life because you know growth is the only only evidence of life because if you're not growing you're dying you know, that's what they say if you're a gardener. If, you, if your food isn't, if your produce, your vegetables aren't growing, they're dying. And, it, and if you want to know more about God, all you have to do is ask. Right? James 1 verse 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given him. So if you want to know something, ask God. If you, if you feel that your uh, spiritual life is kind of lukewarm and you want to light that fire, ask God. And hopefully, when we, as we get deeper into this uh, study about growth, then you, you, you will be motivated and there will be a little bit of a fire lit under you. So, how can I grow in Christ? Well, spiritual growth results from trusting that Jesus is living in and through you. You know, the righteous will live by faith. You know, a life of faith will enable you to trust God increasingly with every detail of your life. And, you know, that's what we want. We want God's hand in everything we do. And, you know what? You, when you do that, you'll be amazed. And you won't regret it. You know, the Word of God is in every aspect of my life. It's in my relationship with my family. It's in my relationship with my coworkers. It's my relationship with random people on the street. It's God's hand is in what I, I put into my body, the food I eat. God's hand is in what I watch, what I listen to, what I think about. God's hand is in everything. And by having God's hand in everything, you know that you're doing what is right when you allow God to lead and direct you. So the first thing to do if you want to grow is to go to God in prayer daily. And when we do that, then we, we have this connection. And let's read a Bible verse. How about John 15, verse 7? It says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. So here we have an opportunity to talk to God where he is going to lead and direct us. And as we ask for his guidance, he, and, and as we ask for things, here's, here's our chance to speak to him directly. He, now, is God a mind reader? Sure he is. God knows our thoughts. But that's not how he wants to communicate with us. He wants us to speak it. And we also have to read uh, God's word daily. Daily. Remember what 
Paul said in Acts 17.11 about the Bereans? Let's read. Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. So that right there should inspire us, that we need to not only receive the word of God with eagerness, but to examine it. Don't just take what your pastor says. Don't even take what somebody says on a you know YouTube video. I've been shared many videos, and I'm not against accepting videos that people want to show me. I'll listen to the person behind the mic who's sharing something. Absolutely. But I have to uh, discern it. I have to compare it scripture for scripture. Is that what the Bible is saying? Remember, you can't make doctrine out of one verse. It's line upon line, a uh, verse upon verse. It's like building a fence, right? If I put one fence pole in the ground, you don't know what direction the fence is going to go. But if I put four or five or six fence posts in the ground, okay, well, you can see that it's going in that direction. And that's the same with the Word of God. If God is going to give us instruction, He's not going to give it to us in one Bible verse. He's going to give us multiple. And you know what? I bet He gives it in the Old and the New Testament. Because that's how God works. And, and, and God has been concerned about our salvation from the beginning. All right, let's continue. So we're going to pray, we're going to read, and we're going to obey God moment by moment. You know, John 14, 21 says, Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. So we have to be obedient, right? Christ is not only our, you know, our Savior, but he's our Lord, and that's what people forget that they have to obey it. You know, it's not just a book of suggestions. God lays it out for us to do. And it's not for us to um, have our own interpretation. We just have to be faithful and obedient to the Word of God as it is, as it tells us. So, we, we have to obey what it says. And Now, if you learn something new, and it's not how, how you've been... Uh, living your life before, that's okay. That's all part of growth. That's all part of growth, that we, we continue to learn new things. And as we learn, remember, Satan is trying to pull us to the darkness, and God is trying to pull us into the light. And the closer we can get to the light, the safer we'll be. So if, if there's anything that you read or study in the Bible that that makes your walk with Christ um, less committed. So if there's something where someone says, oh, you don't need to do that, but by not doing that, it draws you closer to the world, then, then you should question that. Because do you really, at this point in time, as I believe that we are in the end time, do we want to get closer to the world or closer to God? I think we want to get closer to God. I want to look at the life of Christ, and I want, to, I want to be more like Jesus. And you know what? It's not about saying, oh, well, you know, you want to become a, a Hebrew? Listen, I don't want to become a Hebrew. I'm, I'm very happy being a Christian. But if, if, if it was good enough for Jesus, then I think it's good enough for me. And I always think to myself, if I, if I follow the ways of Jesus Christ, and, and I'm brought before God the Father in the judgment. And he says, well, why did you do that? And I say, well, Jesus did it. I don't think he's going to condemn me for that. Because how many times in the Bible are we told to follow the ways of Christ? Now, the other, other way can be said as well. You know, if, if somebody says, if, you know, at the judgment, why didn't you do that? And, and you say, well, you know, I, I was told you don't have to do that anymore. And they're like, well, didn't Jesus do it? Yeah, Jesus did it, but he, he's a, he was a Jew. And, and that's only for the Jews. I didn't have to do that. You know, to me, that's pretty shaky. So, you know, study things out. But I don't think we can go wrong if, if we follow the ways of Jesus Christ. And I don't think he led us uh, 
you know, in, in, into confusion as we read, read the Bible. It's men and Satan who, who lead us into confusion. And, you know, we don't serve a God of confusion. All right, the next thing we need to do is we need to trust God for every detail of our life, right? We must, 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. So we, we're going to trust God every day, and we're going to trust the Holy Spirit to, to, to direct you and empower your, your daily life and witness. Remember, we're not just living for ourselves. We're, we're living for other people as well. You know, we need to um, not only grow in, 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 our, in our life, in our, in our spiritual walk, but we need to share with other people. Let's go back to Galatians. Galatians 5, 16 to 17 says, So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so you do not want to do what you want. And, and that's a powerful message uh, that we, we need to contemplate on as well. That are, are you, as a Christian, are you ready to go all in with Jesus? Are you ready to go all in and do everything he asks? I mean, if you read the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, he's, he's asking us to do some things that maybe uh, it, it would make some Christians uncomfortable. And I have no doubt it makes you know non-Christians uncomfortable for sure. But are we ready to go all in? Are we ready to do whatever it takes? For our Lord and Savior, well, let's let's read a little bit about it, right? So here we have in Matthew five, we have the Beatitudes, and Jesus is talking about, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are they that mourn, blessed are the meek. So here's some some character uh, traits that Jesus is encouraging us because he calls them a blessing. Um, every one of these starts with blessed. So do you want to be a blessed person in the eyes of Jesus Christ? I know I do. And I know you do too. Why, why else would you be? Would you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior if you don't want to receive his blessings? So you, get, you keep going down through all these blessings, and then it starts to get a little dicey in 10. It says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So apparently Jesus is going to say that there's going to be some persecution for righteousness' sake. And what is that? Righteousness is the, what we receive from Jesus Christ. So because of our commitment to Christ and living for him, that's going to bring some trouble our way. Let's continue. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. So Jesus is saying that because of your commitment to follow me, there's going to be some people that are lying and persecuting you and doing all manner of evil against you and remember you're only do, they're only doing it to you because of your commitment to jesus christ and there's there's always opportunities for you to to say you know what i don't follow jesus anymore and then they'll leave you alone and who knows that could come in the future very shortly where you're gonna have to choose you know are, are you gonna go to jail because of your faith in jesus have asked maybe that's that's the easiest thing you'll be asked to do. But remember, it's only because of your commitment. And there's always a way out, and that's to deny Jesus Christ. But you know what? I'm going to tell you right now, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. There's nothing this world can offer you that compares to what Jesus has for you in the future. And whatever struggle you have to go through now in this life will be worth it a million times over. He will make it worth it to you. You know what? Just spending eternity with Jesus as your friend will be, will make it worth it. So don't worry. In verse 12, it says, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. So here's some encouragement from Jesus. He's encouraging us to you know, accept the persecution. No, they're only doing it because of your commitment to Jesus. But you know what? We love Jesus, and Jesus loves us. So we are going to continue to stay faithful. But the only way that we're going to be able to have the strength and the courage at the end time to go through this is if we continue to grow in our faith. 
And, you know, at the end of the day, communication is vital. Communication is vital to any relationship, and that includes our relationship with Christ. And we must, um, you know, spend time. And I, and I talked about this earlier about prayer. Now, I'm going to mention four um, types of communication that will help us grow in our relationship with Christ as we live um, day by day. And the first one is God communicates with us through the Bible, you know, reve revealing his character and his will. And we know that. In, in 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17, it says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And we also need to communicate with God through prayer and sharing our needs and our desires to do his will. And and we read about before, don't you know, don't be don't be anxious about anything. Just go to God in prayer and, and, and petition with everything. And God will give us. You know, we can have the assurance that God is going to help us. Because listen, if he tells us come to me, then we can trust and believe that by doing so, he will help us. And it won't always be in the way or the manner that maybe you think it is. But God will do it in a, the way and the manner that is best for us. And that's why we trust him. Because we trust him to have our best interest. And you're not going to find that in every relationship in the world. You know, not even maybe with your family or your marriage. You're not always going to find that. But with God, you do find that. And, you know, we also, we need to communicate with Christians to encourage one another in faith. You know, Hebrews uh, chapter 10, verse 24, it says, um, well, it starts in 24. It says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. And what is that day? Because it's a capital D. That's the second coming of Jesus Christ. And as we see prophecy being fulfilled, the day is coming. And you can see, you can discern the signs of the times. You know, the, this, this, this world uh, is, is coming together and they're, they're going to be going against, uh, well, they're going against a lot of things. But one of it, is Christians. You know, the, the United States government wants to put together some truth board. Well, if they're going to go out and they're going to discern what is truth and what is error, I can tell you right now that most uh, secular liberal people consider the Bible to be error. So if you're out preaching the truth as, find in the word of, as found in the word of God, you may be a victim of this truth board and i don't know what the consequences of saying something that they don't like but uh, we will surely find out uh, sooner rather than later and and finally we have to understand that you know salvation is found in no one else than jesus christ that's it it's all about jesus and if you read in acts 4 verse 12 it says salvation is found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to me by which we must be saved. So as we witness to non-Christians to help them discover what a relationship with Christ is like, it always has to be Christ-centered. We, we have to lead them to Christ. And as, as, we, as we do that, we have to show them in our own life that it's not a burden, that I'm happy to be a Christian. I'm happy to live my life for Christ. And I'm happy to to go through this life poor if I have to because I know that the riches of God's kingdom um, are so much greater. And, you know, it's not about happiness here. It's about happiness eternally because we know in this life we're going to have sadness. There's going to be pain and suffering. But the Bible promises that in the new heaven and the new earth there will be no more pain, no more suffering, no more tears no more disease, nothing. It'll only be happiness forever. Is that what you want? Because I know that's what I want. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy, and we ask you to help us to, to desire to know you better, to know your word better. So help us to grow 
uh, in our walk with you. Help us to get deeper into the Bible and into the message and to share it, uh, this good news, with our friends and fav- uh, family and those around us. Lord, please bless us as we uh, go into the new week. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you right back here next time. God bless. Thank you.